Hello, this is John Canalopoulos from our center here in Athens, Greece, and uh, clinical professor of ophthalmology at NYU Medical School. Quite an interesting case. This is a young gentleman uh, treated elsewhere with LASIK, and we have this devastating problem post LASIK ectasia, significant drop in corrected and uncorrected visual acuity, best uh, 2060. We can see here the cornea looks pretty clear. There's a prominent foreign body there. Again, the placido disc topography showing significant inferior steepening. A keratoconus picture, basically. And uh, we've worked and we've reported how to treat this. These are the uh, sign fluke images uh, of that same patient showing the extreme thinning. Uh, in our Athens protocol, we would treat this, uh, these are the OCT images, with a topography-guided PRK combined with higher fluency Excel. I beg to show you an alternative that really worked and has much, much lower morbidity for the patient. Again, OCT images here showing uh, that foreign body. We don't know if that was the reason for this young gentleman to be uh, an avid eye rubber. Uh, we have found that this is a significant risk factor even when no other risk factor for ectasia exists for LASIK patients. So we have incorporated in our LASIK informed consent. Don't rub your eyes. So here we, uh, we are clinically, and this is our uh, uh, alternate suggestion. We are going to lift the flap. Um, our classic technique, a uh, Sinsky hook, to carefully go and delineate the flap edge all the way around, avoid leaving uh, loose ends, uh, dentated uh, epithelial edges that could uh, flip into the flap once repositioned and create a uh, scaffold for epithelial ingrowth. Um, with the um, irrigation spatula, we lift the flap, and now we can see how that foreign body is quite embedded in the stromal part of the flap. Um, it's quite tough to get out. Uh, we're removing it and it looks like a, a nylon a piece of fabric that probably found its way within that flap during the original LASIK procedure performed elsewhere, as I mentioned previously. So here we're going to perform a topography-guided LASIK enhancement uh, based on our Athens Protocol uh, previous uh, uh, thought process. This is a partial myopic and hyperopic treatment, as you can see here that will attempt to normalize that extreme ectasia, not as a PRK, but as a LASIK enhancement. So um, uh, you can see this treatment performed with the uh, uh, EX500 wave light laser uh, by Alcon. And following the uh, laser ablation, we will fill the exposed stromal bed with 0.1% uh, uh, riboflavin uh, solution. Um, as you can see here, this is a, in lieu of uh, performing a LASIK extra case, another uh, clinical modality we have introduced, uh, soaking for three minutes uh, in order to allow for the riboflavin solution to reach within the stroma, the residual stroma of this patient, and following wiping out the excess, avoiding to get riboflavin within the flap, the flap was folded onto itself and now unfolded, irrigated, so not much riboflavin will find itself within the flap. The reason being is that once we position the flap, and I'm using here a suspension steroid milk-like solution to after uh, ironing the flap out with a Johnston applinator to take out the micro uh, wrinkles to use this device. This is a device available in Europe. This is a KXL2 device by Vidro. It can offer a customized pattern for CXL. So you can see here these three distinct patterns, the inner one, uh, will deliver 15 joules over about eight minutes. The outer one, 10 joules, and the circular, you can see the three patterns here, uh, seven millimeter diameter circular pattern, the classic Dresden uh, energy for this patient. And all these are incorporated into one. The device is a tracker. It's centered at the thinnest part of the cornea defined by a anterior segment OCT. This is the Optiv OCT giving us a nine millimeter thickness map. And we're using an XY orientation to center this pattern onto uh, the thinnest part of the cornea, the weakest part of the cornea. And this now is the patient treated after the flap was re uh, repositioned. No more riboflavin flap, uh, solution rather on the surface because we want the UV light to go through. You can see here how nicely this pattern is uh, uh, photographed to be delivered um, onto the thinnest part of the cornea in order to reinforce this cornea following its normalization. Uh, and this is um, uh, the first day post-op. You can see the hyper-reflectivity at the um, flap uh, interface. Uh, we can see that this was a keratome, microkeratome flap. Uh, it has a slant edge 
So this was not a femtosecond uh, flap, uh, no epithelial ingrowth, now on the anterior segment of CT map, so you can see the significant normalization. There's a lot of epithelial remodeling, as we can see uh, on the epithelial maps, and these are the uh, sine fluke uh, tomography showing a marked normalization of the cornea. Of course, the disadvantage here is that we thin the cornea, but if you see before on the left, uh, after in the middle, and difference on the right, we see the remarkable change of... Uh, of uh, terms uh, for this patient and as we have reported looking at the uh, topographic uh, uh, asymmetry indices and in particular the IHD uh, showing how uh, we're normalizing this cornea and proving uh, uncorrected visual acuity to almost 2020 and corrected visual acuity to 2015 and this case is stable for over two years uh, this is even a, a nice uh, long-term even further flattening effect from uh, six months to two years and again before and after the topometric indices number one IHD and our uh, reported experience number two the ISV um, change of fate for this patient um, not all the cases are this way this turned out to be a 2020 minus uncorrected seen here at 24 months but definitely a an effective an easy alternative for the patient because with the classic Athens protocol, a topography guided PRK and higher fluence cross thinking, the rehab would have been close to three months. The rehab for this patient was in essence one day um, and uh, drops uh, and precautions just like a routine LASIK case. So I hope you found this alternative approach to post LASIK ectasia interesting. This is John Canalopoulos signing out. Thank you so much.